Welcome back to the channel, guys. It has been quite a while since I've made a video. For those that don't know, I went back into the military. I had to go through basic training, infantry, soot, all of it, and I've been gone for about seven months. So I'm back now. I'm ready to start making some videos. And the first set of videos that I have for you is actually something that I thought of while I was in training and even before training, because it's something that I tried spending a lot of time researching and looking for videos on what it's going to be like during training, especially infantry OSIT training, not just like the obstacles that we're going to do and the training activities that we're going to do, but really what you're going to feel throughout the phases of training, what it's going to be like, what your life's going to be like, how the drill sergeants are going to treat you, how you're going to feel as a human. And there wasn't a lot of that. My biggest concern was what it's going to be like for a person with a family. I have a wife and a son. And I had no idea what it was going to be like going into this, whether I was going to be able to talk to them, see them, hear from them, anything like that. So I want to use these next couple of videos, probably going to be two or three videos to really break down phase by phase what you're going to be feeling during these events, what you're going to be experiencing and kind of the level of respect, if any, you get during these next phases that you're going to go through, especially the basic training portion, because that is something that every every single person that joins the United States Army has to go through. The infantry OSUT side of it, so the, the AIT portion, there isn't an AIT, it's OSUT one station unit training. That portion of it, I'll go into a little bit and I'll dive into a little bit about it. But really this is to cover the basic training portion of it as an infantry OSUT trainee, because you do get treated a little bit differently being infantry, you get treated a little bit being combat arms. And that's not just for me, that is from drill sergeant status from going through the training, you will be treated a little bit differently because they're expecting different skills and aspects out of you. That being said, I'm gonna jump right in. We're gonna go over these phases. I have videos of basic training and we're gonna break down the events in these videos and I'll, I'll kind of guide through and, and bring you along with what I was feeling, what I was thinking, all the crazy things that are going along with each clip in the video. Again, this is going to be primarily the basic training. I'll try to pull some stuff to get some of the AIT portion put into the video so that we can go into that a little bit for the for the people that are watching this that are going into infantry. So let's jump right in. I'm super excited to make videos. We're going to get right after it with the first 72. All right, guys. So there's a couple of things that I'm also not going to share with you because really you just got to go through it yourself and make it fun. One of them is the first 100 yards. There is stuff online. You can look it up. You can see what it is. And it's fun. It's really fun. Just know you're going to be cold, wet. Well, you might not be cold if you go in the summer, but you're going to get wet. You're going to get muddy. You're going to get cut and scraped up and you're going to be exhausted. But it actually is a really really fun time and it's something that's a blast to go through i had a blast doing it it's kind of one of those who -ah moments i guess you would call it and it pushes you to a point of physical i don't, I don't want to say your limit but it's it's intended to bring you to physical discomfort we'll say that it's going to bring you to physical discomfort and push you far and make you have fun doing it which it was it was a blast and then you get into the first 72 hours. Once you finish up the first 100 yards, you jump straight into the first 72 hours. Me personally, all of our stuff, we had green duffel bags and they were all put into a giant pile in the middle of the CTA and we had to sort through it. We had about five minutes to sort through 236 people's duffel bags and we each had two duffel bags. So you can do the math. That was a lot of duffel bags to sort through in five minutes. We didn't make it. And then we got smoked. And then we didn't make the next time hack. And we got smoked. And we didn't make the next time hack. And we got smoked. But it was one of those initial kind of things to learn. Like, there's some stuff that you're just not going to do. You're not going to make it. So don't expect to make everything, but try your damnedest to make it. Because everything is achievable if you do it the right way. If you do it the correct way. The first 72 hours is really getting 
into what it is to be a soldier and what you're expected and the, the customs and courtesies that are expected of you. It's, it's actually called the soldierization process. So there's a lot of classroom time, a lot of being woken up in the middle of the night, not going to bed till late, waking up super early, classroom, no falling asleep. This is when you're really getting drilled down by the drill sergeants. This is when they're really coming after you that first 72 hours because they're trying to make an impression. They're, they're showing you who's in charge, what it's going to be like, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, why you're going to do it, and how to respect the people that deserve your respect. And then you start moving into red phase where things lighten up a little bit. But red phase, in my opinion, was actually the most fun portion of basic training. That's where you have all your obstacle courses. That's where you do all your seaburn training. That's where you do your repelling training, your ropes course training. It's actually really fun. So let's jump right in. Let's watch some of these videos and some of these clips. And I'm going to show you why red phase was my favorite part. So now we're getting to the, the teamwork development course. That is the first obstacle course type activity that we did. And this one is, I mean, the name literally explains itself. It is the teamwork development course. It is there to help develop teamwork, to show leadership strengths, to show weaknesses in the characters. And a big part of this too that I've noticed is that the drill sergeants are mostly observing. They're observing the people, they're learning who these new trainees are, who's kind of standing out for what reason or another, whether it's good or bad. And they're learning who's taking initiative. They're learning who just kind of wants to be back and who wants to just stay in the middle, who's okay with just being a middle floater. So in this obstacle, it looks pretty simple, but what you're doing is it's called, I believe it's called the broken bridge. And you have to transport a casualty, which is 180 pounds on a litter over these, these wooden structures that you see here. And you have, it's three different size planks of wood. You can't touch the ground. If you touch the ground, you fall in the river, you die. Or your, your casualty falls in the river. You can't touch any of the white that's on the wood. So I don't know if you can see that there, but there is not a lot of black on the wood. It's, it's all white. And you can touch the planks. The planks can touch any part of the wood, but you can't touch anywhere that's white. Otherwise, you failed. And you would think, okay, just get the stretcher up like these guys are doing here and just run it across horizontally, you know, across guy to guy this way. <laughs> I tell you right now, that's not the right way to do it. You will get pushed off. It's a pain. We had a couple of guys succeed in doing it that way, but it is a major pain to do it that way. All right, now we're moving on to this obstacle. I don't even know what it's called, to be honest with you. I know it's a pain in the ass, and we just muscled our way through it. We had two of the biggest guys in the company, myself and another guy and one other person actually in our company that just ended up muscling our way through it. We used the long plank and we had to heave it up and use our leverage to get it to pass all the way over. It was, I wish I had better advice for you on this one, but I really don't because we were just strong. We just strong manned it. That's the only way we knew how to get get across and the, the object, the objective is to get that ammo can across. And that was not an easy thing to do. It was a difficult, very difficult objective. And then you had to get the whole team across, which we got the ammo can across and we got three of us across, but trying to get the rest of the team across, that was tough. We, we unfortunately failed that obstacle. We weren't able to make it because we didn't come up with good strategy. We just said, hey, we're strong. Let's just do strong guy stuff and make it work that way. So now this obstacle is another broken bridge type obstacle. It's not, it's really not that hard to do. As you can see here, they've already got the right concept. You got to get a board across, get it so that you have enough room for the other board to go across. Make sure you're using the right length boards because if you drop the boards, then they're out of play. You can't use them anymore. And it's, it's really not a hard obstacle to navigate as long as you get the right size boards then you move forward and it's it's pretty simple self-explanatory you just get the boards across and then you roll the barrel all the way across the other side and then the team the rest of the team comes across the bridge that you've remade but this is the one that i had the most fun on and 
all you're doing is you're getting a casualty from this platform across to the other platform. Then you have to get the team across. The hardest part is getting that casualty across the platform. It's fun. It's a blast. There's nothing set up for you. You have to set everything else. I'm sorry, you have to set everything up yourself, but it's a really fun cognitive and strength test to if you can make it across that or not. Now this obstacle might seem like it's the most simple. This is actually me here going across this obstacle. It might seem like it's the most simple, but it was probably the most difficult obstacle that we faced that day. That was because you get so hopeful because one of the boards is just too short to make it across and you end up being too heavy and you can't pick it back up and it falls down into the water and you lose it. And then you end up having to do, you had to pay for it. So you end up doing exercises to pay for that board and you can get that board back. But this was a tough one. This one was really tough. There was only one group of people that passed it all day long. Now we're into Seaburn, which is chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. Also known as a gas chamber. This is when you get all your training on your pro mask, how to don it, how to doff it. All of the training that you need or the basic training that you need and how the gas mask works. It's not a gas mask, it's a pro mask, a protective mask. It gives you all the training on how the protective mask works and then you get to do the fun thing at the end, like everybody wants to do, you get to go through the gas chamber. Once you're in the gas chamber, it does affect people differently. Some people get really affected by it. Some people don't get really affected by it. I'm lucky and I figured out that I really don't get affected too bad from it. I was had a little tickle in my throat and I think I coughed once, twice and I was OK. And I mean, I said dang near the whole soldier's creed when I was in that that gas chamber and I was all right. This is one of the highlights of basic training because everybody's kind of nervous. It's your first time dealing with actual cadre instead of your drill sergeants. So the sergeants that are there, your drill sergeants are obviously still there on site, but the drill or the sergeants that are there are cadre. They're they're not your drill sergeants. They're regular active duty army sergeants. So they have a little less just want to get you in trouble and just want to smoke you mentality. But that being said, don't disrespect them because their smokings are way worse. <laughs> we learned that the hard way. Don't disrespect the cadre. Not only that, but they'll make you pay for it. And so will so will your drill sergeants later. It is rough. Don't disrespect your cadre. All right, guys, now that we've gotten into red phase a little bit, I want to go ahead and talk about really what you're going to be feeling and kind of how life is going to be day to day. So you're still pretty well under the watchful eye of the drill sergeants at all times. They're coming into your base to wake you up in the morning. They're making sure everybody's in bed at lights out. They're making sure that everybody goes through their shower drills. They're really still watching over you like a hawk, even up until this point at the Seaburn chamber, which is really that first week. So that whole first week of red phase, you're still brand new. You're not expected to know much of anything yet, but that doesn't mean they're going to treat you as if you should know everything already. So you're still getting in trouble for dumb little things that as you progress through training, you realize, like, how did you make that mistake before? How did you not stand at parade rest? How did you not know when to call at ease? Things like that. Like, it's you're still learning. You're still very much learning and you're still an infant in the sense of just training an infant in the sense of training because in the military you have a lot to learn all the time every single day if you think you stop learning at some point and that you know everything already i'm here to tell you you're wrong you do not know everything at any point in the military you will always learn every single day as for how that first week went after the first 72 you do get a phone call home, but it's about three minutes long. That, that first they they give you a call to let you know, or they, I'm sorry, they give you time to call home once you get there after the first 100 yards. And that's just quick. Hey, I made it. I love you. I'm doing good. 
Okay, bye. That's that's pretty much all you get. Like I didn't get to talk to my son, I talked to my wife, and it was just really quick. I'm here, I'm at Fort Benning, I'll let you know when I get a mailing address. It's gonna be about two weeks before I get to call you again or get a mailing address over to you. So that first phone call sucks. I'm not gonna lie, that actually does suck. You think you'd be excited to call home? It, it's not, it sucks. But the first two weeks are really so busy that you just, you really don't get a lot of time to think about being home. You do when obviously you're sleeping and you're getting ready to go to bed, things like that, but that's really the only time. The mornings suck. Mornings were the worst for me in basic because you wake up, you get ready, and it's just like, here we go, here's another day. But that first Sunday that you actually do get to call home, we got a half an hour on our phones and we got to call home and we got to video call and see my son and see my wife and that really made a huge impact on changing my outlook on the next week, on the coming week and how how I was going to be a little more excited and a little more happy and a little more upbeat because I knew that as long as we did everything right, I was going to get to come again next Sunday. So you have your lows, but you're so busy that you don't really have time to sit and think about your lows, which in my mind is, is a plus. It's a huge plus because compared to reception, which I'm not even getting into, we're not making a video about that compared to reception, that first week in basic training is it's the difference between heaven and hell, literally. All right, the confidence course. This one is a blast. I love the confidence course. If I could go back and do it again, I'd do it right now. If I could do it every single day, I mean, if I could set this up in my backyard, I would do it. I absolutely love the confidence course. It was a blast. It was physically demanding. You think you're this hot shot, know it all, and that you can do any of this stuff because you work out in the gym six days a week and then all of a sudden you hit the confidence course and you're like oh this is actually kind of hard like this is this is kind of tough like some of these obstacles you look at it and you go ah it doesn't look that high and then you start to get up there and you're like i'm only on a rope and i'm only 15 feet up and <laughs> for some reason my knees are starting to feel a little weak the confidence course is a blast this was i would say if not first then a very very close second to the most fun activity that we did in training. The confidence course is an absolute blast. There's a lot of smaller obstacles in here that that aren't necessarily requirements for graduation, but there are certain ones that are actual requirements that you have to successfully pass or you have to get a waiver or you get recycled. So there's there's some of them that are that are tough and some of them that are just kind of easy cakewalk. Now we get into the obstacle course. The obstacle course is easier than the confidence course but it's it's more of a timed event like you do it through and through there's no stopping between the obstacles so if anybody's ever done like an obstacle course run like the tough mudder or anything like that that's more of what the obstacle course goes after so you start out with i believe it's a 50 meter crawl you're supposed to low crawl none of these guys are low crawling they're all high crawling and then you just kind of go through some zigzag opticals obstacles it's nothing that's too difficult until you start doing it for time like a competition and like i said everything's just kind of back to back so you start at one place go to the next and then this is the second time that you get to come into a rope climb but this one's a lot higher i believe this one's a 25 foot rope climb and this is where you actually get like fully taught for us anyways it was where we got fully taught how to climb rope the correct way with the the foot hook method and actually be able to go up and go over and reach the top and feel confident in your ability to climb this rope because there was a lot of guys that weren't confident the first time and still aren't confident in climbing rope but this is this is kind of the pivot point for me where it became super simple and super easy to understand how to climb a rope and as you progress through at this point you're pretty tired though because you just did the low crawl which if you actually do a low crawl it's exhausting, it does take a lot out of you to be able to do that. But you go from the rope climb, you run through a couple other little weaver obstacles over and everything like that. And then it, you come into the monkey bars. The monkey bars aren't hard, they're monkey bars, but the bars do rotate just a little bit so it works your grip strength a little bit. Nothing too fancy about it, it's monkey bars. Go across the monkey bars, guys. So that really was the second week 
in itself is the obstacle courses and the confidence course and things like that. That's the majority of what you do during the second week of red phase is the obstacle course. That is fun and you're in a pretty good mindset. Uh, mentally, you're in a pretty happy place because you've kind of already made it through the first week. You're getting through the second week. You know the third week's coming and red phase is about to end, which is like the major smoke session phase. That's when you're getting really screwed up for a lot of stuff because you don't know even the customs and courtesies. You don't know all the minor stuff that you're supposed to be doing and you're learning it. So you also know that Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming and you're starting to feel happier knowing that these Sundays that roll around, you get your family time, you get to talk to your family and you kind of get a little bit of leniency. And if you're a religious person, you now get to start going to religious services that second Sunday. That being said, it's still red face. You're still missing home. You're still learning. You're still confused about a lot of stuff. You still don't understand how really any of this is going to work, how the training is going to work, because Tradoc and Big Army are a little bit separate. You're going to be a lot more strict during Tradoc, and you're starting to learn that and learn what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, because they notice everything in red phase they will get on you for absolutely everything in red phase so that kind of ends week two of red phase and then you move into week three which is eagle tower and eagle tower is fun this is the big one that a lot of people look forward to and a lot of people get into it's not just a repelling tower it's also a ropes course which there's three different ways of going across a rope bridge and they show you the different ways that you can go across a rope bridge and when i say a rope bridge i don't mean like two ropes on each side with planks going across it. It's a three rope rope bridge, which is two ropes up top or one rope up top for your... Yeah, no, two ropes up top, one rope on the bottom. And that's the one that you can just walk across. Then you have a two rope system, which is you got to hold on with up top and your feet go on the bottom one. So it's a rope up high and a rope down low, your hands and your feet. And then there's a single rope, which is where you have to basically pull yourself across with the one leg hanging down and hold your balance. Eagle Tower is fun. Eagle Tower is where you see a lot of people uh, go really fast towards the ground because they don't really pay attention to what they're doing or how they're supposed to do it or they just forget how to use their brake hand. So before they put you on the big wall, they do have a little mini wall that they train you on. They teach you the technique on how to repel. So if you do fall, it's like four feet that you're falling down to. And the rope course you can see here, this is the two rope that you had to go up and then it goes, you go down a single rope where you have to sit over the top of it, straddle, straddle your leg and drop a leg so that you can go down, back down the, the rope, down to the platform to make it back up the three rope. But the three rope is literally just one rope in the center, like I said, two ropes on the side and you just walk up. It's super easy, it's not hard at all. Make it through it. As a man, I know there's women watching this, but this one goes to the men specifically. As a man, I shouldn't have to explain this to you, but do not go down the rope this way. That, I don't know about you, but that does not look comfortable. That really does not look comfortable. That looks extremely painful and it's gonna cause injury. And then when you're at the top and you go to go down Eagle Tower, the biggest important thing to learn is when you drop that brake hand has to come out as you jump away from the wall, brake hand out, brake hand in as you come to the wall, brake hand out, brake hand in as you come to the wall. It makes it easier the faster you actually go down as long as you're paying attention to your brake hand and you're able to stop yourself. If you ever feel like you're going too fast, just wrap that hand back around your back, it'll pull you in and you'll hit the wall. Make sure you control your brake hand. Like I said, you do have a guy on belay below that will help you but it's still terrifying being the guy down below that has to break you up against the wall and hold you up against the wall and hope that you stop in time. Cause if you don't stop in time, you're coming crashing down on my head and now you're hurting both of us. We had plenty of guys start falling and they fell quite a distance. So pay attention, <laughs> use your brake hand. And with Eagle Tower, that brings us to the end of red phase. That is all three weeks of red phase activity wise, but I want to touch on some things about how you're going to feel and what kind of day-to-day -day life is gonna be like. I've said it throughout the video that the drill sergeants are really still watching you like a hawk throughout all of Red Phase. 
The drill sergeants are always there. They're always watching you. You're always being observed. That's throughout all of training. But you'll notice they start to back away from being so full frontal and being so involved in every single activity that you have to do from time management to personal hygiene. They do start to back away a little bit, but they're always observing. They're always making sure they're always double checking because in reality, it is their job to make sure that you're where you need to be and that you're getting trained efficiently and effectively. But during red phase, they are making it known that they are here. They are always here. They're always watching you and that you need to do what's right and that you need to pay attention and you need to follow direction and simple instruction. That's the hardest thing for people in the military not for people in the military, for people training, is to follow simple instruction. They tell you everything that you need to do and when you need to do it, exactly how you need to do it. But you're in such a mind cloud that you, you forget the simple instructions. Follow the simple instructions. Nothing is too overcomplicated. We just overthink it. And now that red phase is complete, we're gonna do the next video on white phase. Give a little precursor white face for me and I know for a lot of the guys in the company was the worst phase to go through mentally because it's all rifle marksmanship all you're doing every single day is going to the range and I know that sounds fun but remember this is basic training this isn't the big army range days are not fun they're not so if you guys want to see the next video I'll get that out soon. Thank you so much for watching this one. Go ahead and give it a like. Tell me what you liked about the video. Tell me what you didn't like about the video. I'm going to work on the White Faves video. I'm going to get that out to you guys as soon as I possibly can. I would like them to come out back to back with very little time in between. I am back home. I do have a full time job, so there's no promises on how quick it's going to be, but I am going to get it out as fast as I can. Get it out to you guys. That one's that one's going to be probably the last two phases because white phase there's not a whole lot to talk about because you're at the range every single day that one's going to be a lot more me talking to you guys and letting you know kind of how you're going to feel during all of that thank you so much for watching this video i've missed making them i can't wait to see the next video i can't wait to see you guys on the next video thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time